Hi everyone, Lisa here with Down to Earth Gardening. Welcome to today's video. And it is on this beautiful tree here. I actually have two varieties for you that I'm in love with. They are, are covered with flowers right now. So I had to bring it to you um, because I love them for quite a few reasons. So we're talking about Cornus Cusa, so Chinese dogwood. And again, I'm here in Northeast Connecticut in zone 6A. These beauties do well in zones five through eight. Um, so always check your zone prior to selecting your plants, trees, shrubs. But look at how beautiful this flowering dogwood is. It is really just covered with flowers. So I want to talk first about what I love about it. And then we'll talk a little bit about the conditions specifically that it needs. And then I'm going to share you, share with you, last but not least, the two varieties that I have in my yard that I am really in love with this year. So Cornus Cusa is a Chinese dogwood and it flowers with the leaves on it. So it's a little bit different than the native dogwood that we have here in the Northeast. and it flowers in the late spring so the flowers that we're looking at right now are actually the flower bracts here and they are a dwarf to medium sized tree so anywhere from 15 to 30 feet tall so what i love about them is they will bloom for quite a long time. A lot of the flowering trees that we have, um, they don't hold their flowers for very long and it's a little disappointing. So this one here, you're really getting your bang for your buck because I'm finding that it's around 10 to 14 days that they hold their blooms. Um, and I also have to say a pretty easy tree to grow. So drought tolerant, deer tolerant, and I'm sure you've all seen my videos about the struggles I have back here living in the woods with the deer. They haven't bothered this tree here. So pretty deer tolerant. That's pretty great. Um, and then the fact that they are a smaller tree, you know, really gives you some versatility in where you can plant them as far as your location. So I have this on the edge of a woodland garden here. And it also can be used, you know, as an accent plant, uh, as a border plant, but it just looks so nice uh, being naturalized or naturalizing up here in the woodland area. So the Kusa dogwood does like full sun. It will take a tiny bit of dappled shade. So this site here gets a lot of good morning sun and look how fabulous this is done here. But another top feature of this tree is that it gives you four seasons of um, seasonal interest. And we are all really looking for that. And it's kind of tough when you live in New England and you have um, all of the seasons. So in the spring, you get this lovely flower, which is long lasting, beautiful leaves. So the leaves will hang on through the summer. They really are a little bit thicker than the native dogwood too, and that helps them with their drought tolerance, but they're a really pretty pointed leaf. And then mid to late summer, they're going to start with their showy berries. So those will um, hang on right into fall, really lovely. I know the birds and the butterfly love this tree. And then in the fall, you're gonna get some showy foliage. So Usually it's orange to red burgundy. And then in the winter, it's a really pretty tree because it has some really pretty bark. So that's one of the features you're looking for um, in the winter is some interesting bark, but also the shape and the way it branches out. It is a little more horizontal in the way that it branches out. So 
so this tree likes to be planted in some slightly acidic soil that is well draining. And like I said, the best location for it is full sun, maybe a little bit of dappled shade. Um, it's pretty drought tolerant, but when you're trying to get it going, you do want to, you know, give it some good drinks and keep it hydrated. But then as far as maintenance goes, the time to prune it, and it's really just selective pruning, um, I just do a light pruning, is after it flowers. And what I'm really looking for is, I do love the horizontal branching, but there's a lot of leaves and flowers on these trees, so it gets a little weighty. So sometimes I will take some of my branches back just a little bit, kind of um, to shape it and for some preventative pruning so it doesn't, uh, they don't break when we get some heavy snow in the winter. So let's talk about the two varieties that I have here in case you're interested in planting them at home. So this one here is called Milky Way. So Cornus Cusa Milky Way. And so the flowers are a creamy or milky white. And this one will get up to 30 feet tall. Um, I would say it's a moderate grower. This one here has been here for, not, this is nine years this year. And um, I know that because my sister-in-law gave us this as a gift. This tree was a gift um, for our wedding celebration. So she brought it here in a little, I think it was a two or five gallon container and it was really small. And so it's been nine years and you can see how much height and growth that it's put on. So it's done pretty well here. And I just wanna give a shout out to my sister-in-law, Lenny, because what a nice gift this is. So Milky Way, and I'm gonna stand back so you can have a great look at it. And here it is, as I promised you, a second gorgeous uh, Chinese dogwood, Cornus Cusa. And what a striking floral display this little tree puts on. It is called Heartthrob. Um, and I love the name of it. I think that it is so well named. It's got this rosy pink floral display, uh, beautiful leaves. And this one only gets about 15 feet tall by about 15 feet wide. That's what it says anyway. Um, I think this one is a little bit wider. So we planted this one. This was about a five gallon and this one was planted 2013. So about 10 years ago and um, kind of a sad story. It was just getting settled. It was only about a year or two old and there was a huge tree behind it that fell on it and we thought it was a goner, but it was really resilient. We did a little pruning and look at it now. It's got a really nice shape. It is a smaller tree, so it does have a lower canopy, but it is just covered in flowers and it also has, um, it's showing you a really good example of how the Kusas will have the horizontal branching. So I have this one here as an accent in my garden, um, little cottage garden here. But as you can see, it would also be really stunning in a border. It does give us a little privacy um, from the neighbors and the deer have not bothered this one as well. So another great tree for you, two great tree options for you today, but there are a lot of different varieties of the Kusas um, that you'll find in some different colors. So have fun with it. Thank you for joining me. I love doing these videos for you. And if you like this one, go ahead and tap like and subscribe to us for some future gardening fun.